You're listening to Force Majeure, an actual play Star Wars podcast. My name is Adam and I'm your host and the GM for our first season, The Cold Fire Chronicles. This is a quick message to all those new to the show. Firstly, hello, welcome to the show. So, when we first started recording this podcast, way back at the end of 2017, we recorded in blocks of four episodes at a time. And the first few episodes we did, I hadn't quite gotten to grips with either the recording equipment or the editing process. We hadn't quite got the mic discipline we enjoy later on. And to be honest, the sound quality for these first four episodes isn't the best. I can assure you that from episode five onwards, there is a massive leap in audio quality and it only improves from there. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, I hope you feel able to stick through the slightly shonky audio of the first few episodes. I hope you enjoy the ride. I hope you enjoy the story. Right, enough of that. You know how it goes. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. You're listening to Force Majeure an actual play Star Wars podcast. My name is Adam, and I'll be your GM and your host. We are running today episode one of the Cold Fire Chronicles. Our players are... Hi, I'm Mikey. I'm playing Juren. I'm a Chiss mystic advisor. My emotional strength is my enthusiasm, but my emotional weakness is my recklessness. Hi, I'm Nim. I'm playing Larsa. She's a human sentinel artisan. Her strength is curiosity, but her weakness is obsession. Hi, I'm Ed Fortune and I'm playing Oberon Breck. Uh, his species is human, his career is a seeker, which isn't a Quidditch position as I understand it. His specialisation is that he's a hunter and his motivation, his cause is justice and his moral cruelty is cruelty. Hi, I'm Ross, I'm playing Agatha, a Mary Allen warrior aggressor. My moral strength is my pride and my weakness is my anger. Okay, this, as I say, this is the Cold Fire Chronicles, Chapter 1. Articles of Faith. The moon of Daxos orbits the mid-rim planet of Ancus. An inhospitable and frozen wasteland, Daxos has recently been taken over by the Empire and is being mined for ice needed to keep the Imperial machine turning. As well as a prison encampment being set up on Daxos, There are a few hardy individuals who choose to work alongside the prisoners, or otherwise settle in the few regions which can support life. Our heroes are inhabitants of Daxos, either Imperial prisoners working out their sentence in indentured servitude, or else free spirits working there for their own ends. They have become aware that they are force sensitive, and following a number of visions, they found themselves individually and collectively under the tutelage of a grizzled hermit named Pijak an old survivalist who tells tales of the Force and of the Jedi, otherwise outlawed and suppressed throughout the Empire. Pijak has been teaching our heroes how to develop their connection to the Force and how to develop their abilities. Our game will be starting in the evening, as you have all been summoned to see Pijak, who has an urgent message for you. Before we get into that, however, we need to generate our destiny pool. So if you could all please roll a, uh, a Force die... So I'm going to roll now, and I've got two light side. I've also got two light side. I've got one dark side. We knew it. And I've got one light side. I cancel you out. Yeah, but guess who the traitor is. <laughs> and I also have got one dark side. So that's three and three. Three and three. There is presently balance in the force. I do like the, the, the laser display board that we have to yeah. keep track of dark side and light side. It's handy, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, everything I've got nowadays is going to be lasered. Okay, so, as I say, the game's going to be starting in the evening as you're heading over to Pijax. What have you been doing during the day? Should we start with uh, Jaron? Well, it has uh, been a long and hard day. Of course, I don't work quite as manually as my fellows, but I, I do okay. I have been holding a clipboard, a, uh, a data pad. Um, I have been telling people where to dig, where to bring ice. I have been... Oh, it has been a terrible, terrible time, and the cold. Oh, it is a cold, desolate planet. You'd think I'd been here for two years. You'd think I'd be used to it, but no, every day, chilled to the bone. Oh. And I'm from a nice world myself, but this is really cold. Really, really gets in your skin. 
What did you ask a question? What was the question? Sorry. What have you been doing during the day? Oh, not much. No, no, very little. Um, but working as much as I really should have been doing. He loves hard work. He could watch it all day. Mm. <laughs> yes, exactly. Ogron has mostly been handed a very long stick and has been spending his day jamming the very long stick into the floors of ice to stop things from blocking up. He, he's very good at it and suspects that the reason he's very good at it is because no one else wants to do it. It's dangerous, it's difficult, it requires patience, and he spends most of his time cursing everyone else. Agatha's been digging. Is that all you did? Agatha's been digging. I, I, I did lots. Did you not hear me? I went on for ages. You were very good. Agatha's <laughs> been digging. <laughs> well, as long as I'm doing the hard work. You wouldn't know hard work if it slapped you in the face, my lad. See me, I've been busy. You've been breathing today? You've been breathing today? Aye, because of me, that is. Just in, not out. I've been working on the atmospheric dampers all the way in uh, Sector 7. I've been there for two days now. The whole place even over. And what they want me to do? Just make it work. Say, I can't make it work. What I need to do is I need to shut it down for a week. I need to replace all the spare parts, particularly in compressor C. And will they give me the funding for it? No, so there I am, modelling it together with bits of compressor A. I've often said that despite the fact that the work conditions are awful and the people are awful and the situation is awful, at least the oxygen is here. (laughs) If you did uh, shut it down for an entire week, how long would we be able to survive while it was down? How long you hold your breath, pretty? Not a week. I see. That's good. (laughs) Let's keep it running as best we can, okay? Evening is falling. The dusk is starting to settle in. And one of the, the reasonably frequent storms is definitely on the horizon. The clouds are, are very dark, reflecting some of the light back from the ice crystals contained in the upper atmosphere. And you're heading towards Pijak's place. Pijak's place is, um, he, he, unlike most of you, he's not a prisoner here. He's here by choice and has, in fact, been here for quite a long time. No one's exactly sure how long he's been on, uh, on Daxos for, but it certainly predates the Imperial occupation. His house is mostly subterranean. That way it kind of keeps um, the heat trapped in. There's um there's an entry room above the service, like almost like a bunker entry room, which leads down below to a, a, a quite a cosy domicile that's been carved out of the ice and the rock. And he has quite a large meditation chamber and guest room, which is where normally you've been going to um He's literally our friend in the underground. He's literally your friend in the underground, yeah. 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 Which is mostly where you've been you've been being taught by him. It's a place that he's developed to help you focus and, and, and meditate. Are you going to be arriving individually or, or collectively? What order are people thinking that they're going to be, be getting there? And Oberon is the sort of person to wait for to make sure that everyone else is going and then falls behind. Now, Oberon's a prisoner, yes, isn't he? So Jaren and, and Agatha are also prisoners. The prison camp itself is fairly cosy, so you're able to, to kind of keep some tabs on who's coming and who's going. I suppose an interesting point is, do you all know that each other has been being trained by Pijak. Is this the first time that he's summoned you all together, or...? I'm well aware of what he's been doing. He's been talking to me about it. I've been here a bit longer than some of you. I've seen him come and go before. Uh, but, uh, he, yeah, he, he was telling me a bit about you, but I didn't know who you were quite so much. I mean, I've met a couple of you, I know you. Everybody, Everybody knows me. I am very popular here. Aye, aye, popular as Pudu. Pudu's very useful on the nice planet. Very oh, useful. You're full of it, my ducky. In oh. the end, you will still love me. I am coming with Agatha. Yes, um, it is far out. Um, there are howls in the night. And Agatha is not quite as quick as running as I am, if you understand what I'm saying. Agatha keeps warm. Ogron's been spending his time watching everyone else go in and out, uh, but has been taking his lessons privately to this point. He will be unsurprised that his attempted stealth, however, has been detected by everyone else. Okay, so it makes sense to me then to say that um, Jaren and Agatha are going to be the first ones to get there, with the rest of you, with um, with Lassa. Well, you can't be Lassa, it's a long R. Lassa, Lassa and, uh, and Auburn coming a little bit later on. Dangerous shot there. Mm, yeah. Not with you, my friend, though. Not with you. Mm. Agatha's good at bodyguard. Mm. Okay, uh, Jaren and, and Agatha, as you're getting close to um, Pijak's place, you do notice some signs on the outside of his 
entranceway that looked like a, a shuttle, or, you know, like a, a small transport, like a cold optimized speeder, has definitely set down here. The wind hasn't picked up at the moment. The snow's not that disturbed. And there are there are clear signs that something's set down and there's been movement of people mm-hmm. in and out. So something has landed and since taken off? Yes. Okay. The door, though, is still presently closed. What do you do? Uh, make our way straight towards it. There doesn't seem to be any reason to be uh, fearful or anything like that. And uh, go and rap on the door smartly. Okay, as you knock on the door, it shifts under your hands. It's not locked, it's slightly ajar. Pull it open. Agatha pulls it open. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, Single-handed. <laughs> yes. Do you want to instruct an Agatha <laughs> pullers? This, this is how this works. Agatha, do me your, your best pulling open, please. Crunch. <laughs> you, you slide the door open, and the first thing that immediately hits you from in here is that it's not warm. Now, normally with, with Pijak's place, it's kept reasonably warm in there. It's underground. He's got his own environmental samplers in there. He's got his own air conditioning and heating units. So they don't, And even when he's away hunting, because that's how he makes his trade, he hunts ice wolves, um, it's still normally on because Daxos is so cold that once you start leaving the, the atmospheric processes off for a bit, as Larsa has said, it starts getting a bit too cold to comfortably support life. It's not freezing cold the air coming out of here but it's definitely not as warm as as it should be the lights are on but dim almost like the generators running down slightly Duran uh, lets out a um, a large shout of uh, Bajak are you here Bajak how loud do we want to be because I don't know how long we want to associate that's a good point Bajak <laughs> your voice kind of echoes off the um the stairs yeah. leading downwards into his main home. No response comes back. Lassa, as you kind of round the hill, you can see two figures standing outside the doorway to um Pijaks, looking a little pensive in their body language, I'd say. You do recognise them as being fellow inmates of the prison camp. You know, it's 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 Jaren. He Jaren alone is is fairly distinctive as he's a chiss and he's the only chiss on site. Agatha's also fairly um, distinctive as the only Miriallin on site. In fact, it's a small little little menagerie. And to look at you is terrible if one is colourblind. <laughs> yes, quite. <laughs> but not racist, as colourblind. <laughs> you really do look the same. Apart from right. the height. Okay. For the benefit of listeners who aren't as familiar, I have a green-yellow skin and... And a chiss are uh, blue with red eyes. But look fairly human. Now we've explained the joke. Let's continue. <coughs> well, this might be a good opportunity, actually. So, yeah, you can see um, Jaren and, and Agatha waiting at the doorway. What do you both look like? Let's let's do a nice little rundown for the listeners. What do you guys look it's like? It's like gaze at the visage. There's okay. a big one and a little one. Eloquent as always, Ross. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Jaren is um, he's, he's not small, actually. He's, he's about six foot tall. He's quite well built, but you can't really tell because he has more than his fair share of... Of um, coats and furs on, he's obviously done quite a good deal with whoever uh, w- deals with the uh, the coming and going of equipment because he is wrapped up nice and warm. He has goggles on his head at the moment. His hair is surprisingly well made, uh, uh, kempt for a prisoner, and um, although he does look fairly worried right now, a uh, handsome man um, for a um, a a, 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 a just no really really handsome man. Agatha looks bigger because he's broader shoulders. He's, he's sort of more accustomed to sort of armoured formal wear in his past life, but now he's wearing sort of just padded prison stuff. Standard prison fare. So. I'm going to walk down slowly. Um, I normally wander around with a, a stick. I like poking at things when I'm walking and it makes sure that the nice walls don't come too close. So looking quite harmless. So then... All right, what's going on around here, lads? Where's your IDs? Because I work here, I need to make sure I know who they are. Okay, and what do you look like then, Lassa? You might not know until I speak that I am a lady, because I am wrapped up very well. Uh, nothing is new or shiny, everything is worn but well maintained. I don't have my goggles on my head, like a pranny. I'm wearing them on my face, over my eyes, because that's where goggles go to serve some purpose. I feel like I'm being attacked here. <laughs> What gives you that impression? 
We've just arrived. I took my goggles off because we were going inside. I don't know that, do I? Oh, thank you. Yeah, probably. Okay. You're enthusiastic. You're taking them off before From you From a distance, yours. I dislike you uh-huh. already. It's like, well, he's doing well with the quartermaster. He's clearly knocking some off on the side, but you don't wear his goggles properly. Are you saying that he's a chess punk? Talk about you, <laughs> not about me. I think I'm saying a lot about me. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, I've got my goggles on. I've got a big woolly hat. It's clearly thickly knitted with patches and whatever added into it, tied up under, um, and a big old stick. And I walk with an air of authority. We're looking inside the building. We don't see this yet. She has called out. I'm That's true. Out yeah. you do. And it's quite still out here. You can probably hear her footsteps over the snow. So yes, she's she's called out to you. Well, so say what you said again, because I'm... I, I want to know who you are. No, everybody knows who I am. I am Duran. Here is my ID. Right. You? Agatha holds out his ID. He generally tends to let Duran do most of the time. Now, this is uh, Agatha. He is my uh, prison buddy. Yes, is that right? Prison buddy? Yes, prison buddy. Right. I don't want to suggest colleague. <laughs> colleague. <laughs> Associate. Business partner. Is this your acquaintance? She asked directly at you. Um, I've forgotten this your is, name already. This is Dren. Dren. Close enough. Right. Right. Dren. Agatha. Agatha. Right. And what, what are you doing down here? We are uh, here on a, a mission to go and get first for the quartermaster. And why are you down here, Agatha? Because it's dangerous out here. It's icy. And there's wolves out. And you are clearly in need of some help, which is why you were loudly shouting... For Pijack. Who lives here. So where is he? You shouting for him? What are you after him for? Is he the person you're getting the furs off? What are you doing? Yes, he is the hunter here. He is uh, a man who, who brings furs to the... Is this your first day? I'm sure I've seen you before. Movement catches your eye. And coming over again the, the, the hill, the, the pathway along to where Pijack's is... Hello, Pijack. Hello. The door's open. Another one of yours? Ah, I mean, <laughs> ah, the rest of our... Um, uh, the door was open. Mm. Where... I know it is cold inside. I am worried for his safety. Where's Pijack? I don't know. I haven't got inside. We were doing an interview for some reason. Pijack might be in danger. What Agatha you... feels we're losing the element I, of stealth. I, I've seen you all around here before. Mm. But it's always nice Shall and we warm get inside. Let's get inside and see if we can get the dampeners back. I, I'd like to take these goggles off. Mm, mm, indeed. What do you look like, Oberon? Oberon is six foot two. He is human. He is bronzed skin. The bronze is slowly, surely fading to reveal the pinkish avocado underneath. He is dressed quite... All of his kit is relatively new and would have been expensive at some point. He's He must be a noble. He doesn't have... He doesn't have poodoo on him. Uh, essentially, he's still quite smartly presented. Uh, he's very wiry. The bits of him that isn't covered by a nice-looking kit. He's tallish. He's not that handsome, but he's smartly dressed. And he also uh, holds himself well. Uh, he also has big, big, blonde, spiky hair. Uh, but that's clearly a dye job because the roots are showing. And he's desperately needed a decent... Uh, the, the hair underneath is kind of gingerish brown. Uh, slowly but surely fading out. And you can see, uh, even those might be a dye job because there's roots that are pale white underneath. You've definitely not been here long. Definitely not been here terribly long. Okay, so yes, you're all kind of uh, around the, the, the entrance rotunda of, uh, of, of Pijak's place. Mm-hmm. Your voices have been echoing off the uh, the stairwell leading down. I guess the light were... starts to fade a little bit. As you were talking, you can see them, again, just going a few degrees dimmer. Right, well, we ain't going to be able to, be able to egg around here. It's going to get bitter cold. I'm going to... Uh, you. No, you. No, you. You come with me. We'd better go sort out the eating system. So I'm going to go and refill the generator for this place, which can't be far away. It'll be close by. It's, it's probably... Un- well, you, you know, it's, it's actually in the complex downstairs where it's protected from the worst of the cold. Great. Agatha goes with her. Okay, so you two lead the um the way down the stairs. Yep. Well, I reckon I know who you lot are now. Let's see. The Garby Nerf Herder, aye. You'd be the senator's son, or Posh's like. I've heard a bit about you, lads. You said he was uh, 
working with a few of you. Come on then, let's sort this out. I'm not a senator's son anymore, or not anyone's son anymore. Don't believe I have ever heard of any nerfs. I'm not sure what a nerf is. Mm-hmm. I've never seen one. I think I've never nerfed before. I imagine what they do is they, they are unruly and not, need, need hurting quite a lot. Probably a very dangerous and prestigious uh, thing to do. And she has recognised that in me. Probably quite dangerous to move at high speed. Yeah, I imagine so. But but they sound fairly harmless. So I suppose if you get hit by one, it won't hurt that much. No, no, it is true. It is true. Well, we, 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 we have the person who is in charge now. What are we to do? I shout down the stairs. Okay, Agatha and Lassa, you've, you've made your way down. Um... It's essentially a tunnel with steps, um, metal steps, with that kind of raised perforated gridding that's that's designed to stop it becoming slick in the ice and uh, and and any meltwater. Leads down. It's it's a little claustrophobic. The tunnel. It's it's not very um, wide around, and you know the ceiling's kind of a bit cramped. The the lights are embedded into the ice itself, and they're they're low heat, um, low intensity lights, and it's just really to guide your way into the. The main complex. On the way in, though, as you're kind of you're looking in, Lassa, you're you're a, you're a mechanic. Would you make me a mechanics test, please? Um, it's a, it's only a, a simple test. It's only a a black, uh, single purple dice. No successes. Just two advantage. advantage. Anything particularly you want to spend those advantage on at the moment, or or if you want to keep hold of them for? It's quite. I imagine it's quite quiet underground. So it is, can yes. we have it on advanced hearing echoes so we can hear if something is coming along? Yep, that's that's absolutely fine. Yeah, that's totally reasonable. So yes, you make your way down the um, the tunnel into into the main complex under here. It's it's a, it's a number of small rooms. Essentially, the um, the tunnel leads down first of all into like a receiving room. It's wider than the tunnel, but it's not a, a huge room. Um, and from there, there are a number of doors that branch off. You know from being here before that a door to the left branches off and goes down to a pantry, a coal store, which is carved directly into the ice, and a small kitchen. Another room goes into his bedroom and a guest bedroom side by side with one of the refreshers down here. And to the right, there is a much longer, more winding tunnel that angles down, down, down into the bedrock itself of Daxos, which then leads out into his meditation chamber, which is carved out down here. You know from having been here before, because he he knows a little bit about mechanics, he's talked a bit of shop with you in the past, that off that tunnel is essentially a small engineering room, essentially, which is where the um, environmental regulators are, it's where the generator is, it's where the, the water purifier for the refreshers are, it's 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 a utility section. Getting down into like the main receiving room, though, again, something kind of feels a little off down here. The atmosphere is a bit strange. The lights are again starting to fade a little bit more, and there's a there's a strange smell in the air. I don't know if either of you would like to make a perception test. Okay. I'll let you have a look as uh, my eyes are playing out. And while they're doing that, yep. I'm having a sniff around the energy of as we were, and I'm slowly but surely heading towards their way. Yeah. Uh, I've put my, my, my fingers on the ground. Yeah. I, I've given it a rub, mm-hmm. I've given it a sniff. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling the walls, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm slowly but surely, I, I'm, I'm tracking, because that's yeah. what I yes. what I do. Uh, I'm going to use my force power, or mm-hmm. force C. Okay. To uh, use me spend a force point, or use a light side point. Have yeah. you rolled it, though? Oh, do I have to roll it? Of course you do. You can't just go, I'm spending a force point. No, you need to make a, a force powers check. So roll your force die. Dark. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't use it. It just means that you're going to be tapping into the more, well, to the dark side of the force. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because you'd think that someone who had a sense of privilege and then was unfairly ripped from that would have a sense of entitlement. And he does. So cheerfully having no actual real understanding, tears from the dark side. Okay, and what does your power do when uh, you spend the pip? Uh, spend the pip, uh, the, the user may spend uh, a pip to get a big hint of events to come up, up, up to a day into his own personal future. So I'm combining that with my tracking skill mm-hmm. to kind of do a bit of a, a, a bit of a poke, essentially. Okay. So I'll make a survival check as well. Yep, it's two purple. 
So, as far as the tracking goes, you can't really pick up anything from here. It's Lassa and Agatha have bumbled down there now. It's quite narrow and you're staying up at the top really you can see that there's been footprints coming to and from the entrance to where a speeder or a small shuttle or small craft had pulled up you know it's some point it must have been some point in the last few hours because prior to that there'd been a storm um but other than that you've not really man you can't work out how many people came what was going on you know it's it, it's just not a about, good enough read about a minute in I point to the, the, the freshly moved broom and go, oh, he's tidied recently. That's useful. As far as your foresee goes, however, as you're you're trying to, to sense what's going on, you know, you're, you're doing your, your almost ritual of looking around what's going on, you definitely get a sense of violence, of threat coming for you. Fear. There is There is definitely conflict in the future, there is definitely aggression which is aimed at you. There is there is death in the air. I have a bad feeling about this. Yeah, he, he, he will not survive outside by himself. I think someone's coming. Don't ask me how. I gently back away uh, and uh, separate myself uh, slightly from the group. Well, there's only me and you there. Yes, <laughs> I know. From the group of one. I'm, I'm looking for a particular parcel that I know is nearby. Okay. So, Jaren sees you head off a short distance away? Stay where you are, I'll be back shortly. Okay. Uh, yeah. Jaren um, is in the antechamber. He's going to make his way down into the living area and have a look for stuff. Just have a bit of a route round. To, to be quite obvious, I'm going to go and get my stuff. Yep. A duffel bag with my things in it. Yes, your, bur- your buried kit bag. Back to um, Agatha and Larsa. You see anything? Probably not. Uh, okay. It's two. Difficulty's two. Okay, this is going to go great. <laughs> yeah, really, you're probably not the person that should be making that perception All test. Right. I no, I'll have a go as well. <laughs> <laughs> so it's three successes, three successes and a threat. And a threat. What you can see in here, now that you're looking around making your way to... Um, to the engineering room, really, to, to the utility room. There is signs of some form of a scuffle in here. You know, you can see from where the rugs have been rucked up. You can see where there's been a chip out of one of the door frames from some... There's clearly something has impacted on that. There is a mark on the wall that you recognise. Now you're kind of looking at it on, on your way to the utility room. It's a ring shape that's the, of, of where energy has clearly scuffed the wall, such as might be seen when someone fires a blaster on stun. And it sends out that kind of pulsing ring that, that, that knocks people out. So yeah, there's definite signs of some form of a scuffle down here. There's no blood anywhere, but there is there is signifiers of a combat uh, of a conflict of some form down here. And from where one of the, the rugs in the bookcase has been moved, it looks like some someone or something has fallen heavily against that and knocked it subtly out of truth. This don't look good. Looks like there was a bit of a kerfuffle down here. Making your way to the utility room, kind of down the corridor and that, you can see that a, a remote shutdown command has been put on the generator, which is why it's slowly powering itself down. It's not out of fuel, it's turning itself off. Right. Why would it do that? I, I, I'm a mechanic. I ought to know that. It's mm. shut down remotely so someone has turned it off on purpose. Mm. Would you like to make me either a mechanics or a computers test? Possibly computers. It's been done by distance, which is two yellow and one green. What's the difficulty? Uh, it'll be two uh, purple and one black, which is your threat. Three successes. Just three flat successes? Just three flat successes. What you can tell from going into the programme is that there, there has been a remote shutdown command triggered in. That remote shutdown command hasn't been entered from this complex. Somebody has sliced in remotely and started the shutdown procedures on the generators, on the life support, on the maintenance facilities, the environmental suppressors. And what you know as well, being being a mechanic responsible for maintaining those things in the main prison base, if this all does get shut down properly, then within a few hours, it's going to be treacherous to be in here. And within a day, 
it's going to be nigh on impossible to get in without outright blowing open the front door. It's a full-on lockdown. You also notice through doing that that there is a separate command that was put in but not fully activated. It's, it's caught in a, in a coding loop that's supposed to close off the meditation room. With those successes, you can reverse this and start things back up if you need to. All right. See, now I know that he was here teaching these things. He was teaching me as well. Someone's trying to close the meditation chamber. I'm uh, I'm getting rid of that. I'm going to stop him from doing that. Did Pijak do that? Or did someone else do that? You can't tell. I can't tell where this is coming from. Can't think why you'd do it. Meanwhile, Jaren, kind of keeping on the top, it is now getting bitterly cold up mm-hmm. top. Night is starting to fall, and there's a slight dusting of snow starting to come down in the distance. You know how you, like sometimes you can see when it starts raining or snowing in a cloud yeah. formation and it's moving towards you? You get that kind of darkening. Yeah, you can see that there is one of the storms coming. Thankfully, at the moment, it's not got the driving wind that it usually heralds, but there is definitely a snowstorm I shall bell to the rest of them and then and say, my friends, Lassa, we are um, needing to leave quite quickly, I think. There is a storm coming in. A few minutes later, Auburn uh, rejoins you carrying an ice-covered, I presume it's almost like an oil skin. It's a weatherproof yeah. duffel. I think we should head down. There's a storm coming. There is. The shelter is here. Mm, but... Uh, if we are not there to be counted when we get uh, later on tonight, we will be in trouble. If we are dead, we are in worse trouble. It is true. It is true. Let us hope Lasso can get the uh, heating back on, eh? Uh, I pass him on the shoulder and head down. Okay. Mm-hmm. Are you going to close the door behind you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I I do everything that is sensible for someone who wants to survive a blizzard. <laughs> yeah, you so kind you of... left the door open this long. <laughs> I've come, yes. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> yes. I've um, packed munchies. <laughs> you two get in, you kind of close the door behind you. It's a bit of a struggle because I just started to form around it. But um, between the two of you, you're able to put your shoulder in and, and drag it closed. Um, as it does close properly, the mag locks automatically activate, locking it behind you. You notice as you're kind of doing that, essentially, that there was there was a, a, a small kind of chip of ice which had stopped it closing fully, presumably when whoever was here left. And as you kind of... Well, now we're for it. Fortunately, well, let's though, stay here, shall we? <laughs> the lights start brightening again, gradually, but start brightening again. And you can start to hear the faint thrums of the heating units. I'm terribly concerned. I'm less concerned. We're going to live. More concerned for our friend. Well, my friend. I'm assuming he's yours as well. I, everybody is my friend. There is no sensible reason to ever turn off the heating. Unless you are not intending to come back. Uh, let's do a forward check to make sure that everyone who should be breathing is. Mm, indeed. I, I believe we start a search pattern. Yes. Yeah. Well, you make your way down into the, the receiving room to begin with. It's about that point that you finished click click, 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 click. Uh, and that that's uh, f- for our listeners that uh, that's audio code for turning the power back on um <laughs> agatha what have you been doing while um lars has been bashing computers and turning gears and generally making herself look complicated i've been fetching things when she said point to things and said get that i need that okay well i you can now hear the footsteps of what you presume is these two coming down the, the corridor, uh, down the passageway and, and in. But I turn to address them. It's working. Good. We came down so we didn't freeze to death. Good. Good pal. There is a storm. I do not think we will make it back. I would like to fully check these areas to make sure that Pajak isn't somehow unconscious in one of these rooms. Good then. You go that way, I'll go this way. We will search the area completely. I make a show of um, my bag so I can see that I already had it mm-hmm. before we started searching things. Yep. What does your bag look like then? How clearly bulky is it? What's Can anything be seen? Is it a military-style kit bag? It's, what does it look like? It's got... Uh, it's a, a camouflage bag. It's clearly some sort of animal skin that's been 
uh, modified. Uh, it's got a lev- strong leather tie to it. It is long, it is thin, it is bulky at the bottom, uh, and it has had some sort of logo very carefully picked off. So you spread out throughout mm. um, Pijak's house. How I think I'm going to have this one is a group um, perception test. Two. So that's four advantage, but one failure. Okay, so your search doesn't turn up anything particular. Aside from the um, the obvious signs of some form of conflict that's taken place in the main room, um, which you got earlier on, there's nothing else really that you can point to uh, as as what's happened here. There is no, there's there's certainly no blood. There's no broken down doors. Aside from the slight kind of charring on the wall, as I say, from where one of the stun a stun shot has has clearly hit. There's nothing nothing else that can really leaps out at you at the moment. Partly that's got to be good. If there's no blood and there's no limbs or things... Is there an absence of Pijak's belongings? Nothing obvious. You know that when he goes out hunting, which is what he does most days, then he, he's one of the few people that's certified to actually have a blaster rifle legitimately because he's a hunter and he's not a, a prisoner. It's, it's registered because mm. the Empire have to have something, but they're also aware that without his furs and meats coming in, it's a supply drain on them. So he is certified. So he would got, he does have um, kind of cold weather, camouflaged hunting gear and his rifle, and they're not around that you've managed to find. You do have four advantage though, Mim, so um, what do you want to spend those on? Can we have them on useful items found? Like cold weather, camo furs, that sort of stuff, hunting knife. Yes, things like well, that. Well, his butchery tools, for example, um, which will be... Because being prisoners, I suppose you're you're not a prisoner, Lass, you're the only one that isn't. So you're allowed some equipment, but everyone else, you know, they're not going to be allowed to carry knives, they're certainly not allowed blasters or anything like that. So you can certainly get some bladed implements, some more pouches, some cold weather gear to help you survive out here. If that's what you want to spend those on, I'm quite happy with that. Food. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of food. Still. Yes, and you say you find the yeah yeah he does he has a first aid kit um, with two stim packs in. I have a very bad feeling about this, and that's where we're going to finish for today. Force Majeure is played using the Star Wars Force and Destiny game system by Fantasy Flight Games and Lucas Bucks. Our intro music is Actionable by Ben Sounds. Our outro music is Suburban Outlaw by Forget the Whale. And some of the ambient sounds and sound effects within the show have been provided by Purple Planet. These are all used with gratitude under the Creative Commons license. Some more of our ambient sounds and sound effects are provided by Sirenscape because epic games deserve epic sounds. For more information and links, please see the credits page on our website. We can be found online at forcemajeurepod.com, on Twitter and Instagram at forcemajeurepod, or on Gmail at forcemajeurepod at gmail.com. Please feel free to drop us a line, let us know what you think of the show. And if you want to leave us a review wherever you found our podcast, that'd be cool of you. Thank you very much, and see you next time.